We got some breaking news to get to here on the Broncos breakdown as Malik Reed has been traded from the Broncos to the Pittsburgh Steelers, a popular trade candidate all offseason long. And right before the Broncos 53-man roster deadline, George Payton sends him out east to the Steel City. Adam Schefter first on it saying the Broncos are trading Malik Reed to the Pittsburgh Steelers for late draft pick compensation. And right before we started filming, we got the details on that draft pick compensation. The Broncos are going to receive a 2023 sixth round pick. The Steelers get Malik Reed and a seventh round pick. Now, this is not a huge, sexy, spicy trade, but you got to tip your cap to George Payton a little bit because it kind of reminds me of the Trinity Benson trade last offseason. The Broncos had a player who just had no spot on their roster, and they were able to get something out of him before just cutting him and waving him. Now, I want you all to get in the comment section early on and let me know who won the trade. I know the Broncos may not be obvious winners for getting a six-rounder, but all in all, if you're able to get something for a player who was buried on your depth chart, I'm not too opposed to that here. Now, the Steelers, on the other hand, they're going to get a player who led the Broncos in sacks just two seasons ago. Do they make this trade because of the T.J. Watt injury? Possibly, probably. I mean, you look at Malik Reed's career stats. Like I said, this is not a top draft pick from the Broncos who are they are moving on from early on, like Malik Reed, and we'll get to that in a little bit too. But he was the Broncos team sack leader in 2020. Last year, a bit of a dip in five, with only five sacks and just sort of an overall production drop-off. But all in all, happy for Malik Reed. My only reservation, and we've talked about trading. I mean, if you have watched the show before, you know Malik Reed has been a popular trade candidate. And I have long said, I don't mind trading Malik Reed. My only reservation with it is he provides some quality depth at a position where the two starters do not have a great track record of playing an entire season. You know what I mean? So moving on from Malik Reed. Right now, it seems fine and dandy because you have Benito, you have Baron Browning right there. But what if you were to lose Gregory or Chubb for some period of time? Then you might want Malik Reed here. Now, when the Broncos make any kind of move, we break it down on the channel, which is why you got to go ahead and subscribe. So hit that big red button if you have not already to get the best Broncos news, rumors, trade coverage out there. Let's take a peek now at the depth chart as it stands this moment in time while we film Aaron Patrick, Jonathan Kongbo. They might be cut slash likely to be cut. Don't want to wish any ill will against anybody, but unfortunately, that is the nature of today. So Malik Reed, he Audi 5000, Baron Browning, Nick Benito, those are the two guys to step up for Gregory and Chubb. I also think you can spin this this way. Randy Gregory, does this mean the Broncos are very confident in his knee and shoulder and there are no concerns over an injury on that front? You know what I mean? So Malik Reed to Pittsburgh, that is the trade news on that front. We've got more to get to on today's show. McTelvin Ajim was cut this morning, a bit of a surprising move in my opinion, but we did kind of predict it on the show during my 53-man roster projection. Plus, Jonathan Harris, by the way, was cut just moments ago. I'll chuck tweet deck right now. Any other cuts? Oh, right, yeah. That's where I look right here. Uh, Davine Osbigo. Uh, I can't pronounce that name. Uh, but that was the running back who they got from the, 40, uh, from the 49ers, from the Saints earlier this week. Osbigo. Maybe that's it. I'm sorry, Davine. Good thing I don't have to deal with that for the whole season. But grade the trade for me. A, B, C, D, or F. Let's get back on track. What letter grade would you hand out for this deal? I think to get a pick for a player who it seems like was going to be cut in a couple hours if they couldn't find a trade partner, it's not an A, it's not a B. To me, it's like a C plus, right? It's a little bit above average. You got a six-rounder. You only had five picks for the draft. You gave one up, but you moved around earlier. C plus for me. Now, McTelvin Ajim. Third-round pick for the Broncos back in 2020, and he's done. That quickly into his start with the Broncos. Only played in 17 career games. A bit of a surprising cut, right? I mean, 
we had discussed this before on the show. He was a prime surprise cut candidate, and he balled out in his last preseason game with the Broncos. Did he ball out enough to garnish a roster spot? In the eyes of George Payton, no, it was too little, too late. I don't think it was too little, actually. He put up two forced fumbles. One led to a strip and score. I mean, a scoop and score. Now, here's how the depth chart looks currently on the interior defensive line. All three faces you see are going to make this roster, in my opinion. Matt Henningsen, the rookie out of Wisconsin, he's probably going to make this roster now. He was right there with the regime for battling for a roster spot. Mike Purcell still holding on. And then another rookie. Ioma Wazurike looks like five, maybe six, all make it here. Now, Ajim has been a disappointment. Let's just call it what it is, right? Through two seasons, only amassing 12 tackles, one and a half sacks in 17 games played. I'm a little surprised that the Broncos cut ties relatively quickly with a third rounder. But all in all, George Payton has shown... He's not going to stick around with talent just because of where they were drafted or because he drafted them. He wants to put together the best 53-man roster. And if he believes there is someone better, even if they weren't a day two draft pick or one of his picks, he'll go with them. Now, another move that was made was Josh Johnson was released by the Broncos today, which means Brett Rippon has won the backup quarterback battle and knock on wood, Hopefully, that's the last time we ever say Brett Rippon's name this entire show. Because the goal is, you never see Brett Rippon on the field. You see him number four on the sideline with the clipboard. I don't really like that the sideline hats this year, but they'll have those hats right there. So, hopefully, we don't talk about the backup QB for the rest of the season. But Brett Rippon beats out the veteran Josh Johnson for that QB2 job. Shout out to Rippon. He's been floating around the practice squad and the active roster. Boise State guy. Shout out to Michael Wilson. If you know, you know. So happy for him that he can land on this roster. Let's revisit the trade one more time. That way you guys don't forget before we send you on your way. The Broncos get a six-rounder, while the Steelers get Malik Reed and a seventh-rounder. So the Broncos... Had to give a little bit of something to get a six-rounder back. The Steelers knew they were going to cut him. They didn't want to risk him going somewhere else in the waiver wire period. So all in all, they pony up and they give up a six-round pick. Now, before we really send you on your way, if you have made it to the end of today's video, Broncos country, let's ride. You know the drill. Drop a let's ride down in the comment section if you are a member of the end of video squad.